getting their uh, rotating assembly put back together. This is, uh, it's been a struggle, but there's a learning curve. And once you get to the learning curve, it actually becomes a lot easy. I'll say a lot easier. And I'll say what's really, really helpful in this situation is um, having some kind of overhead to kind of help monitor or tune or adjust the pressure of where the crank is relative to the block. It just makes it so much easier. You kind of like, you can put a little bit of pressure on in terms of all the weight versus just trying to slam it in there and fight all three other cylinders while you're trying to do this. The technique is pretty simple. I'll just move the camera around. Um, I started uh, from the middle out just because it made it easier for me to not have to fight myself. Uh, if you get the outs, if you get the outs in first, or the, if you get the cylinder one and four done first, it's a whole lot more difficult to get in here and work around, right? So I started with number three, then I did number two, and then number one and number four. Um, the real, I think the real caveat, so they have reliefs. If you see down in here, I'm, I'm pointing to it. You see there's a little relief there, and then on the opposite side, there's a little relief here. And what that is, is it just gives you access. I think, um, like from a factory perspective, TK for Mercury made, uh, they made a clamp kit. They look like big C clamps that go in and you put them in, you put them in three positions or four positions and it, it just basically preloads those springs. So it, not like a conventional sleeve type piston ring compressor. They're just, it's just like a clamp, right? So these are springy enough um, where you can actually just do this with your fingers. Um, the trick is, is just, you got to do this real slow. So as soon as you touch down on your, on your first ring on whatever your lowest cylinder is, wherever you start, you just got to get in there with your fingers and pinch it and then let it very slowly drop down and you can just feel it. It's like magic. If you feel any force or resistance, uh, what that means is your ring is probably, um, out of alignment. So the alignment, the tricky part about the alignment is that if you look I can get on the side of the piston here. This one's basically out of alignment, right? That little pin right there is what aligns up with your gap. So if you're off of that, right? And these things move around a lot um, as you're trying to finagle all this stuff in. Um, you got to get these rings centered on that alignment pin. Otherwise, they'll never go in, okay? You'll just sit there and, and fight yourself for hours so i found that the cool tool for this job is this guy right here so what happens is once you get your first one set and it slowly drops in and you go in and you get your second one set and if these are moving around on you you just get in here very carefully and just kind of scooch them over right scooch them so that they're they're centered up and then you just very slowly kind of walk these in one by one so I got three in and I just got to do that last fourth. So I'm going to throw this back on the stand to get that done and move on to my next task. How was the volleyball game? Great. Great. It was really fun. Yeah. Who won? Amazing. Michigan State. Michigan State. Mm -hmm. What was the Chrysler? I, you know what? I've never been to the Chrysler Center. It was actually pretty small. Yeah, it was pretty small. But it was cool. Their, volley their volleyball... Um, like, their volleyball stadium was really small. Yeah. Like, the part that they played in was really small. And they were just kind of spread out. They were in certain spots, and they didn't rotate and stuff. They were just in random spots. Oh, yeah? Yeah, just, like, scattered all over. Well, they probably had different rules.
Ooh. So now we're all in, all four are in. We're floating up off of the, see we're floating up off the main. So the, this started out as a revalve job. So just to point out here, you can totally do this without have, pulling the crank out, right? I think I had to get in there and I wanted to do an inspection. Um, so the whole, the whole thing kind of came out. But if you want, just so you know, if you just pull the crank out high enough so that way you can clear this pin down here, right? Obviously the piston skirt can't be too high, but you get it to the, about that level and you can remove each one of these reed valve blocks independent of having to take the crank out, which is kind of cool. Um, save you a whole bunch of time trying to compress rings and getting the whole thing back in place. So that's, that's my next job. I'm gonna take these guys, which I fixed up earlier. We got new valves on them. All right. Very cool. So I'm gonna get those installed and then start putting all this stuff back together.
what's really important also is when you're putting these end caps back on if they came with a shim that's how they set the end play the tolerancing for the end play on your crankshaft so make sure you do not lose these guys you want to make sure that they go back in the right spot just seal up with an o-ring they have internal seals for the shaft but these just these guys just seal up with an o-ring What's up, bobbers? We all gotta put back together. How they look now? Gap good and everything? Oh yeah, yeah. They're like, dude, look, they're like brand new. Okay.